mentioned the, the 50 year scenario. Uh, so it takes time. These major projects normally take time, take a lot of cooperation and ultimately a lot of funding. As I understand, the Research Triangle Park commem commemorated its 50th anniversary early this year in January, and it's now home of more than 170 of the world's cutting edge companies and institutions with more than 40,000 workers. And if you think about that, and those of you that obviously live here all the time, uh, that, that is a tremendous, tremendous asset when you look at it from an economic standpoint. And so the question becomes, how do we support an asset like that from, from an infra infrastructure perspective? As you're aware, the uh, Triangle Expressway will be a six-lane controlled access road. Uh, we anticipate it will save commuters up to 20 minutes, and that's very significant for a lot of us. It's also unique in that it's designed and built to use electronic tolling system without the toll booths, as I understand. And as we move into the future, looking for innovations, as a congressman mentioned, uh, innovations into the future are going to be very important, finding those uh, different ways not only to build infrastructure, but also to uh, maintain and operate the infrastructure. The expressway will go a long way towards serving the travel needs of the commuters in this key educational and employment center. It will connect key roadways and improve access to the research park. At the DOT, we are excited to be able to provide funding for the project through a $360 million TIFIA loan, as, as the Congressman mentioned. TIFIA, it's a long name. I won't tell you what that name stands for. Uh, it is a federal credit program for transportation projects of national or regional significance, and quite clearly, this is a, a regional project. Probably at some point, you could connect it you know, in, in concept to the uh, national significance. Through TIFIA, we can make funds available for many projects such as this, and we, offer, we, we do offer flexible repayment terms. Uh, I, I know we, we've kind of been mingling and talking about the, uh, the payment terms, and, um, you know, as we look at this throughout the entire nation, uh, looking for new innovative and creative ways of financing transportation will be an important topic for the future. Now, the other thing to think about as we look at some of these partnerships is that when, when you work into a partnership or get involved in a partnership, you're looking for win-win situations. And uh, certainly this is a prime example of this, but again, looking through, uh, looking into the future, looking at, at different innovative and creative solutions, we're looking for those win-win situations. And, and again, as we work into the future, with congressmen, with the administration, and the rest of Congress, we certainly will be looking for that. Another issue with respect to win-win situations, I do want to mention that right now we have a major effort underway on a national basis, and it's called the American Recovery and Re Reinvestment Act. I'm sure we've all heard about it. Across the country, Re Recovery Act funds are putting people back to work on transportation projects. And right here in North Carolina, we have about 153 Recovery Act projects that are pumping $437 million of recovery funds into the state's economy. Eventually, the total Recovery Act project allocation for North Carolina is about $730 million. And when you equate that or extrapolate the number of jobs that will be created or sustained, uh, I think that's very important for the economy here. Now, across the country, Re Recovery Act funds are putting pe people back to work. As of this morning, the Federal Highway Administration had designated about two-thirds of the $26.6 billion in Recovery Act funding that was allocated nationwide. That equates to about $17.4 billion that have been authorized to date. And when you consider that this act only passed five months ago, uh, you know, that, that's a very significant effort and really a major achievement to date. Now, from my conversations with our North Carolina Division Director, John Sullivan, and some of our uh, North Carolina DOT staff here, I know that North Carolina DOT and Federal Highway actually have a very strong partnership. And those are, once again, the partnerships that will be important for all of us collectively to accomplish great things. So I'm looking forward to continuing the partnership with the DOT and with the authority and all the major players out here. So once again, I do want to thank you all for le letting me be part of your celebration here today. It is a special day. And uh, what, what I would like to remind all of you as I close out my comments is I wish you the very best of luck with the project. We will continue to work with the state. 
Uh, we will continue to work with Congress as we move into the future and the administration to make great, great things happen. So with that, I do want to say finally, um, I do want all of you to think about safety. I want you all to be alert, to buckle up, and to drive safely out there. And thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I can't let Administrator Mendez get away without thinking about his comments about partnership. And you need to know we believe we've got the best division administrator in the country and his staff. George Hoops has been a tremendous help to us in helping to deliver this project. We're very grateful. Thank you. Uh, in January, Governor Perdue appointed Gene Connie as Secretary of the North Carolina Department of Transportation. From 2001 to 2003, Secretary Connie served as Chief Deputy Secretary at NCDOT and was responsible for cash management, safe, safety initiatives, transportation planning, and program and technology. Prior to joining NCDOT, Secretary Connie served three years as Assistant Secretary for Transportation Policy at USDOT in Washington. Now as DOT Secretary, Gene Connie is leading the department's effort to improve all modes of transportation. He has already worked to implement a transportation improvement program and continues to oversee the department's allocation of economic recovery for infrastructure improvements. On the national level, Secretary Connie was recently named chair of the American Association of State Highway Officials Committee on, Committee on Rail with major policy implications for the administration's high-speed rail initiative. I now introduce my friend, my colleague, the chairman of our board, a line in the transportation in industry, Secretary Gene Connie. And Secretary Connie, I have one word to say. The ball is in the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, David. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, a wonderful day to be here with you and thank you all for coming out to celebrate with us. Um, I want to thank David first of all for years of effort on this. It, it, there were some dark days. Um, we had some concerns that we might never get into the end zone but I assured him that I grew up a Steeler fan and we were going to win the Super Bowl on this. I um, want to also recognize um, all the Turnpike staff, Grady Rankin and others, Jennifer Harris, Steve DeWitt, I mean this is a yeoman's effort on their part and really in partnership with a lot of our DOT employees as well. I think it's uh, again an example of getting it done when you work together. Um, again took us a lot of effort and overcoming a lot of hurdles also want to recognize my old boss and mentor David Price we spent a number of years together on the hill and certainly when we need him he weighs in very strongly and very effectively on our behalf and that was certainly the case on this project and really want to welcome Administrator Mendez to North Carolina um, Victor and I met recently but we don't know each other well, but he brings a great deal of experience. He understands, I think, North Carolina intuitively because he understands we want to maintain our quality of life here. We want to continue to be on the cutting edge, and that's certainly the experience he brings from Arizona to the federal level. And um, I didn't um, want to harass him too much, but I did give him a copy of our application for the I-85 corridor bridge over the Yadkin River, um, just in case. <laughs> also gave one of those to Deputy Secretary Perkari a couple of weeks ago in Washington, so um, we're briefing them very comprehensively on that project and how important it is. I do want to thank the local officials here, and I don't have time to name all of them, but I see all of them. and. Um, we really appreciate your support, your partnership, and uh, want to recognize particularly Jim Crawford who works with us on transportation issues in the legislature um, in a significant